uh, Mr. Uh, Todd McLean. Mr Chair, thank you very much. Uh, what I would say, Mr Chair, to the last speaker is, and he raised the issue of process through the Select Committee, that the time for crocodile tears is over. Eight long meetings, uh, that member and other members of the committee had to ask any question they wanted to, and the committee gave every opportunity at every meeting for questions to be asked, and what happened at the 11th hour, when it was time to deliberate, they were raised. So, Mr. Speaker, when... Uh, A point of order, uh, Honourable David Fowler. I seek leave to table the minutes of the Finance and Expenditure yeah, Committee when order. five weeks... Order. Now, the other day I cautioned the member he shouldn't interrupt a member on his speak, feet. I'm not denying the leave being put. I'm just saying it is a convention... Uh, well, uh, it's not for the chair to judge the veracity of the comment. This is a debating chamber and other members can respond and the member can... Uh, between speeches, seek to ta table documents. Uh, Todd McClay. Mr Speaker, thank you. And I recall, and this is a part of my speaking, not speaking to the point of order, that uh, that, that was put up last week. Uh, members tried to table it. So it is time to move on. And that was the point that I was making, Mr Speaker, uh, Mr Chairman. Members opposite are telling us about a rush process. Well, let's think, uh, let's put our mind back to the comments that uh, Honourable Tony Ryle made earlier. And let's talk about a rush process and how people change their mind about what's good one day, not good the, less, uh, the next. We heard from uh, uh, Tony Ryle, Phil Goff, Annette King, Trevor Mallard, Mallard. Part of this House of Ministers, when $10 billion worth of New Zealand assets were sold. Not partially sold, not 51% held and guaranteed in the Crown uh, so that the Crown had the absolute say. No, 100% oh, was sold. And of course, Mr Chairman, no member opposite, member of the Labour Party, uh, that was a member of the Labour Party then or today, uh, would say that that process was changed. New Zealand Steel, 1986, was sold. What was that, Mr Speaker? Uh, Mr Chairman, absolutely. Uh, done under urgency. Petrocorp, Petrocorp, done under urgency. The post office, first and second stage uh, readings under urgency. No select committee stage. It was all right back then, Mr Speaker, but here we are today, Mr Chairman, in this House with members opposite saying we didn't have an opportunity to ask important questions that we needed to know. More than eight meetings of the committee when the Treasury, our advisers, were there. And did they raise those issues? Not on the first meeting, not on the second meeting, not on the third meeting or the fourth or the fifth or the sixth or the seventh, but on the eighth meeting when it was time for the committee to deliberate. That's when they decided to stand up and all of a sudden it was, it was important to them. Air New Zealand, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chairman, Air New Zealand, uh, is here as part of uh, this bill today, and we considered this uh, in the Select Committee. Air New Zealand, uh, what happened there? They got rid of all of it way back in 1987. Under urgency, again under urgency, not an opportunity for the New Zealand public to come before us, not an opportunity for the New Zealand public to come and have their say under urgency. Uh, and then we have the Tourism Hosp Hotel Corporation. Guess what? Under urgency. The only thing that wasn't urgent about that piece of legislation was the service you got at the time from those hotels. And can I tell you, as some of them are now in my electorate, they do very well. Does the government own 51% of those? No, they sold all of them. And here's the one you'll hear a lot about. You'll hear all about service. You'll hear all about what's wrong. You'll hear all about why it shouldn't have happened. In 1990, Telecom New Zealand was sold under urgency. 100% of it was sold under urgency. And can I say to the last speaker, Mr Chairman, the time for those crocodile tears, the time to pretend that you care about New Zealanders is gone. You had an opportunity in our committee, you didn't take it. I, I apologise, the member opposite didn't take it in all of those meetings. Mr Speaker, there is a difference between what we're doing on this side of the House and what members opposite pretend they care about. And what's that? Well, it's about debt, Mr Speaker. They'll tell you this makes no difference at all. But look at what's happened in Greece over this last weekend. Look at the challenges that they face all over Europe because of debt. Now, members opposite will say to us, it's OK, let's borrow a bit more. Let's keep investing in assets by borrowing a little bit more. It doesn't matter. Actually, what they'll say to you, Mr Chairman, is let's push the age of retirement up by two years to pay for the woeful uh, decisions they have made and will make when it comes to spending. But that's not fair to New Zealanders. And I recognise members and other parties in opposition also believe that's not fair to New Zealanders to make them work harder for bad economic decisions that that party has made. Our debt level is, is to peak at 30% of GDP. And that's right, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, that's $72 billion of debt that New Zealand will have. 
Well, guess what, Mr Chairman? We heard when we were in committee about how much our New Zealand, the Crown, owns. $245 billion of assets. $245 billion of assets all over the country. And we aim to grow these over the next few, few, four years to $267 billion of assets. What we've also said to New Zealanders is there will be 3% of those assets that we will offer you the opportunity to purchase. 3%. And not only that, we won't do what the Labour Party did through the 90s when they gave away $10 billion of New Zealanders' assets without any consideration of keeping them for themselves, without of any care about them. Mr Chair, Mr point Chair. point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mellon. I was just, as the member's speech finished, I was going to invite him to uh, whether he wants to make a correction now or later as to who was in government in the 1990s selling assets. I think it was the Order, that's debate. a debatable point. Well, it's uh, not a debate, it's a matter of fact. Uh, order, order, the member shouldn't comment. It is not, as I said earlier, for the chair to judge the veracity of any comment that's made in this house. This is a debating chamber, and equal sides get opportunities to put things. And it, it, that is how this house actually works. David Clark. Point, point of order, David Clark. Point of order, Mr Chair. I seek leave to table the minutes of the select committee, which show that uh, we sought advice from the Treasury oh, about order. the effect of power prices. Now, now, I just want to be quite clear about this, because we had some time last week ascertaining that when you say table the minutes of the select committee, pertinent only, it, right, so the member needs to make that clear, which I've now ensured. So leave us sought for that purpose. Is there anyone opposed to that course of action? There is. Mr. So, Mr. Chair. A, a speaker, or, uh, David Clark. Mr. Chair. David Clark. Um, Mr. Chair, I rise to uh, speak to part one of this uh, bill in the committee stages. Um, Mr Ryle earlier spoke of a mandate for these sales, and I think that he did that um, willfully knowing that, uh, that, that, in fact, that is not the mood of the nation. The nation is opposed...